So, Cloud, you were a soldier first class, right? Yeah. Weird. Really? What's weird about it? Nothing. Just that you were the same rank. Huh? As who? The first guy I ever loved. Yeah, we are standing outside of Wall Market near the playground, just like in the original game. Only it took a little bit more time to get to this time, so... Oh, the Loveless poster. I guess those are all over, aren't they? Here. Hmm? This won't take long. <sighs> Want to get to Sector 7 in style? This is the passageway for you. So... <laughs> Go ahead. You gonna be okay getting home? And if I said I wasn't? I'll go with you. I thought you needed to get back. <laughs> Don't worry. I have a backup route for emergencies. And it's safer, too. <laughs> Guess this is it, then. Ready? Yeah. going on? Shh. I'll explain everything later. But now I'm on my way to see Don Corneo. You should head back to Seventh Heaven, meet up with the gang. But... I'll be fine. You've seen how much ass I can kick? I have. <laughs> yeah! Yeah! Oh, no, you don't. You're going after her. She's a big girl. She can handle the likes of him. And worse. Uh-uh. You don't know, Corneo. It doesn't matter how strong or smart you think you are. He'll find a way to turn it against you. And where is she going to meet him? A mansion filled with his goons. Come on. Aren't you worried what might happen in there? You have to help her. <sighs> Come on! Okay. Come on, Cloud! We gotta hurry! I don't know. Don Quineo was a mobster and he had connections to Shinra, but I never really got the impression that he was that dangerous of a guy in and of himself. Had Cloud wished in the original game, at least, to just storm the front door and try to get at Tifa, he probably could have gotten away with it. I mean, if Cloud doesn't really have any qualms with killing anybody, he'd just have to make sure Corneo was dead before he left. Hey there, where are you headed? You gave a ride to a girl earlier. Do you have any idea where she went? No, and if you don't need a ride, then get the hell out of here. Can't you see I'm trying to work? Can't say I can, no. What'd you say to me, you little... What's all the ruckus out here? Hmm. I don't know you. What's your story? We're looking for a girl who took one of your carriages. Can you help us find her? Depends. What do you want with this girl of yours? Guess. We want to save... Save her from a life without this handsome guy. Huh? So, 
That's how it is, huh? Well, I get a lot of customers. Hard to keep track of them all. This girl, what's she look like? Well, she was just here. Just here. She's in great shape. Is that really important? <laughs> Wait a minute. You talking about Tifa? That's her. <laughs> oh, looks like someone's got a bit of a crush. Hate to break your heart, kid, but it's gonna be a long while before she sees the light of day again. What do you mean? She's a real pretty girl. Corneo's hosting another audition, and Tifa was chosen as a candidate. An audition for what? For the title of the next Mrs. Corneo. She's what he likes all rolled into one sweet package. Having scouted girls for so long, I know his taste better than my own. And considering those tastes, I can guarantee you this. She won't be walking out of that mansion anytime soon. If at all. So where can we find this Don Corneo? <laughs> what are you asking for? Thinking of raising holy hell or something? Do what you gotta, but leave me out of it. I told you what you want to know. Now take a walk. Uh, and there goes our best lead yet. <laughs> Maybe we'll have better luck in town. Let's check it out. You know, I'm not sure that this is quite the same situation that we had had in the first game. It seems as though this is more of a Don Corneo looking for just sort of a personal girl for himself. Whereas in the original game, I'm pretty sure he was just trying out the prostitutes before they worked at the Honey Bee Inn. Sort of like an audition. Eh. Well, I guess something at the change. Welcome to Wall Market, the pleasure capital of Midgar that's got everything for everybody. Couple, huh? It's all good. Play together, do your own thing, earn a little scratch on the side even. Whatever you're into, we got you. Got a special one-time limited offer. No, thank you. Come on, Cloud. Let's go. So, what kind of mischief you looking to get up to tonight? I feel like I'm missing out on something here. Now this is the first time I played through the game and I made a very specific effort to make the game footage suitable for this kind of video. So I lowered the music volume to make it easier to hear the characters, but unfortunately I can't hear the soundtrack all that well. And the soundtrack is pretty good. You two! Yes, you! Do you have a place to stay this enchanted evening? We have the perfect room for a sweet looking couple like you. How much? Cloud! <laughs> Just give me a holler when you change your mind. The original game had a dating minigame inside of it where you would have the three female characters as well as Barrett taking part in it. And as you played through and made decisions when the dialogue choices, you would accumulate points for each of them four particular characters, and once you reach the gold saucer, you would go on a date with that particular character. Now, of course, this game is never going to reach gold saucer because it ends at the end of Midgar, so I wonder how it's going to play out in this, because there's clearly something similar going on here. All these little decisions that you're making are probably adding points to Tifa or Eris or, I guess, Barrett. And at some point, there's going to be some sort of a, I don't know, a scene or something between the characters. But since it's not going to be at Gold Saucer, it's anybody's guess when the hell that's going to end up being. As far as the towns in Midgar go in the original game, Wall Market was probably my favorite. It was, you know, I'm not sure if that it actually makes any sense, but I think it was probably the biggest town in Sector 7. Or in Midgar, rather. And it was also... I think it had the best soundtrack. And, I don't know. I got stuck there the original time, the first time I was playing through the game, the original game. And you'd think that that would be frustrating for a young player. Somebody who is just trying to get through the game, but they wander into a town and can't figure out what to do. So I got stuck there for probably an hour or so. 
just wandering back and forth trying to find out what to do. And I ended up even leaving the town and running back to Sector 5. The town in Sector 5, thinking that I must have missed something there that I needed to continue on with the quest. Turns out I, I was just doing things wrong and not talking to the right people. But there are a lot of little side quests, little extra things you can do in here relating to the dress that Cloud has to get. Like you can get the makeup put on, you can get a higher quality wig, you can get the perfume, all that kind of stuff. Adds a little bit of extra substance in the original game to finding your way through Walmart. I'm pretty sure if I wanted to, I could plow through the Walmart in the original game in like 10 minutes or so. I don't know, maybe the honeybee end scenes take a little while, but it, it would not be long. It wouldn't take long. Hey, it's Johnny. <laughs> that guy was supposed to skip town. He's still in Midgar. I would have demanded that he leave Midgar, not just Sector 7. Ugh, to enter or not to enter, that is the question. Wherefore does this philosophical quandary torment me? You totally get where I'm coming from, right? Yeah, I should have figured. You're not the philosophical introspective type like me. That soft, naive face. I know you're kind well, bro. You're just another muscle head who uses violence to work through your inner demons. It's sad, really. Huh? Yeah, what's up? Seen Tifa around? Tifa? My love? My light? Who are you and how do you know her? No, shut up. I don't care. Tifa's here? Why? Tell me why! Oh god, no. I did this to her, didn't I? She came looking for me to beg me not to leave her. <gasps> Snap out of it, Johnny. Your Tifa needs you! Tifa, I'm coming, baby! Who was that? Nobody you want or need to know. My apologies, sir. We are not ready to open at this time. In the original game, Johnny was a bit of a weird spot, because I think his characterization might have been a little bit the result of a bad translation. What exactly what was his relationship with Tifa? Did he know Cloud? I mean, I, I don't know. In the original game, and this, he clearly doesn't. <gasps> what? Aren't you that leaf house? Uh, hey, what the hell, Merc? Digging into people's personal affairs in this town is a huge no-no. What are you doing here? Uh, well, if you must know, I've wanted to be a dancer ever since I was a little girl. I come here at night to live the dream. Uh, I'd appreciate it if you didn't tell the children, okay? I've always wanted to dance for a living. Here's another thing I'm not quite sure how to think about, or what my opinion is on it just yet. I gotta give some time before I'm able to sort of put my thoughts together about what I think about this game. And I do kind of have to finish it first, so I should give it the benefit of any doubts, at least until I have the entire experience behind me. But the Honeybee Inn is represented differently in this game than it was in the original. Now, I guess maybe it wasn't ever explicitly said what the Honey Bee Inn exactly was, but the perspective I always had was that the Honey Bee Inn was a brothel, and it was especially kind of, I don't know, it had a lot to do with the reason why, even though Cloud wasn't allowed in, they would have let Eris in. So he's like, no, I can't let you go in there. You know what kind of place this is? But the Honeybee Inn, as represented in the remake, is a very different kind of thing, and it comes across more as, like, a Vegas show. And I don't think there's any sex going on in there. And that kind of, I don't know, gives Walmart a little bit of a different vibe. I would imagine that prostitution was illegal in Midgar, because, I mean, why would you go to Walmart for it if it were legal? So it gave Walmart a little bit more of a sense of being this kind of seedy underbelly, almost in the literal sense, of Midgar. And Walmart was kind of a trashy looking place beyond all of that. I mean, Walmart was built pretty much in the same way that a lot of the other buildings were and a lot of the other towns were in Midgar, built out of scrap materials and all that kind of stuff. 
Whereas the wall market I'm looking at here is definitely a dumpy ass looking place. But it isn't nearly to the same extent. These look like proper buildings. This place looks like more like just a party town. And when we finally do get into the Honeybee Inn, we're going to see that it is a very different feel to it than what I would have been expecting. And it feels more like just a place with theaters that you go and you see shows. It doesn't even come across like it's a strip club or anything like that. So, I guess, I mean, why would the teacher really even feel um, self-conscious about going there or want to hide that fact? I mean, from the children, sure. But the other people in Sector 5, I mean, it doesn't make sense to me. I will go wherever my research leads me, but the success of my endeavors rests entirely upon you. Your assistance would be much appreciated. There's something off about this kid. He comes across to me as sort of like that semi-emotionless hope that we had seen in Lightning Returns. And when we first seen him, he seemed more even robotic than anything else. Cloud, I've come up with the most fascinating theory. Perhaps you can lend me yours. Cloud, I've registered a new summons battle intel. I need you to defeat the summon entity so I can complete the material. I hope you will continue to help me gather vital information for my research. Then I invite you to ready your portable battle simulator. Fat Chocobo, a summon from the original version of Final Fantasy VII. Now, it wasn't really a summon in and of itself, because you you could summon Fat Chocobo, but it would really only happen when you were trying to summon the Chocomog, the first summon material you find at the, uh, where was that? The Chocobo Ranch, I guess? Well, anyway, I'm not sure what the context was or what you had to do to get the fat chocobo to summon because ordinarily you would just get chocomog uh, chocobo with uh, moogle riding on its back it would run into the scene and crash into the enemy then the chocobo would grab mog and stick it on its back and run away and if you got ch fat chocobo it would just sort of fall from the sky and land on the enemies so I don't know what I had to do to actually summon it I guess I could look it up and not come across like an idiot but well, I don't know, maybe I could just not and just live forever in ignorance. <laughs> so goofy. You know, I'm not sure what the elemental weaknesses to this thing were, so I just summoned Shiva, because, I don't know. The summons in this game are not nearly as useless as they were in, in, uh, what was it, 13? They were pretty useless in 13. I mean, you would use them just for the sake of getting your other characters out of the scene so they could survive a little bit longer and doing a little bit of damage, but it was really not that useful. In fact, a lot of cases you maybe get yourself killed trying to use a summon. In this game, it's a little bit more useful because your characters, your other characters don't disappear. Your characters don't despawn, so it's just an extra character for a little while. It doesn't do a whole lot of damage. Like, she was not helping a whole lot in this fight. But she is there, and she is adding some damage to the fight. And if you happen to line up an elemental weakness to the enemy, like when we were fighting Shiva, I brought Ifrit, and Ifrit actually did a few instances of some good damage. But you gotta make sure you get your elemental weaknesses right. And as far as Fat Chocobo goes, I don't know what the hell elemental this is supposed to be. It's summoning bombs, but I don't think it's a fire elemental, because we already have a fire elemental. So, I don't know. Maybe it's physical damage and there is no elemental weakness. Hmm. Nah, yeah, whatever. I had to speed the fight up because it lasted for like 15 minutes. And just had to get through this real quick. I don't think anybody's ever watching my videos for the sake of a lot of um, strategy or tactics or anything like that. Truly amazing work, Cloud. This is incontrovertible proof that the universe has a sense of humor. Now that you have a fun new partner in Fat Chocobo, 
You can work together to squash Shinra like a bug. I look forward to receiving all of your future battle intel submissions. Looking at the map, it's I had a little bit hard to navigate this version of Wall Market because the original Wall Market was more or less just a, a straight line from south to north, and there was a set there were two lanes, and you had the buildings off to either side. But it was very easy to find yourself in going able to go in any direction or find out where you're going. And this, it's more of like a grid pattern, and I had to constantly check the map to reorient myself. And especially since a lot of the uh, streets and all that look very similar, it comes across as just really complicated and hard to find my way around. Plus, there are a lot of buildings here, like this one here, this bar. Now, there was a bar in the original game, although I can't really remember if you had any necessity to go in there. But in this, anyway, it feels like there isn't. And I just found myself going in here because, I don't know, it was a door. I went through it. They added the detail of having the bar, even though it wasn't really necessary. And that's something that I have to commend the developers of this game for. They did a lot of little things that they didn't really have to. There's no reason for that bar to be there, when the, but the bar is. Why? Because, I don't know, maybe somebody who played the game remembers walking into that bar and think, well, you know what? Maybe there should be a bar here. So you can walk in there and you take a look around. You can stand in there for five seconds and then turn around and walk back out like I did. It, I guess, adds something to the experience, but it must have taken quite a bit of work to set that whole thing up. Now, if you look around in this game, you do see a lot of... Well, I mean, you do see repeating assets, the same thing, reappearing over and over again because, I mean, that's just the way games work. But a lot of these buildings and a lot of the environment and all that kind of stuff is built using... Oh, look, the, the diner. <laughs> it was another place you could go into that didn't really have a purpose. Even in the original game, I don't think it had a purpose going into the diner. But there's a lot of special, like, individual assets seems to be used in this game. And that's something a little bit unusual, especially for a game of this scale and this scope, because you have... You tend to want to reuse a lot of assets over and over again to shorten development time and make life easier on your developers, your modelers, and all that kind of stuff. In this, they put a lot of extra stuff in here. Now, the fact that the game tends to be made of a lot of fairly linear pathways, like the path from Sector 5 to Sector 6, we were heading through a tunnel, more or less. Makes that kind of thing possible, because you don't have to have a whole lot of assets being like clumped together on the disc so they can be easily loaded what you'll go is you have a narrow pathway passing through and a lot of these little like squeeze your way through uh, obstacles and all that kind of stuff to slow the progression of the player down so it gives time to load the next set of assets in so that's probably why this game was so damn huge i bought this on disc so it comes on one disc, which is a two-layer Blu-ray disc, which is 50 gigabytes. So there's 50 gigabytes installed. And then it had a second disc it called the Play Disc. Now, the Play Disc had to be inserted whenever you were going to go and play the game. Now, the thing about the PlayStation 4 is it doesn't allow games to be played off of the disc. The system software is just not set up for that. I guess Sony wanted to sort of set a baseline for disc performance, and the optical disc of a Blu-ray drive is just too slow for modern games. Even in the PlayStation 3, it was on the slow side. So they wanted the mandate that you had to load everything off the hard disc. But, huh, well... 50 gigs was apparently not enough for this game, so we had a second disc. And I don't know how big the install size is of this game. I should check it out. But it's definitely more than 50 gigs, so that play disc had data on it itself. And that data probably had to be installed. And once you started playing the game, it probably uh, loaded that data off of the Blu-ray disc onto the hard disc. So the install size of this game is huge. And it's huge given that 
especially in comparison to a game the size of like Fallout 4 or Skyrim or whatever, does feel kind of small. I mean, the game isn't small, but the environment and everything and the amount of time you can spend playing and all that is small compared to like Skyrim. And Skyrim was only like an 8 gigabyte, 8.5 gigabyte game. It could fit on a DVD. So, in Skyrim, it worked because they were able to load a lot of the same assets into a lot of different areas. Whereas in this game, they didn't quite do that. They do reuse assets, but a lot of the stuff we're looking at, even in this area here, which is very repetitive, uses a lot of special assets. Now, wander around Walmart, you see a lot of stuff you don't see anywhere else. It's just a house. It's no ordinary house. 